We're sitting in gallery uh, 241, which is one of three galleries that we program across campus. Our current exhibition is an exhibition of toys called America's Monsters, Superheroes, and Villains. And it came to us uh, through our product design program here in the college. Uh, and it's a contextual reading of toys in the 20th century and how society shapes the toys we play with. But basically, it's a really fun look back into our toy boxes. One of the things that the Goldstein Museum of Design tries to do uh, is really reflect the research and programmatic interests of our faculty and our students, as well as, as much as possible, reflect their research or their creative production. The environment of an exhibition um, is very different than faculty publishing papers that basically appear in peer-reviewed journals, which is wonderful, but also is, has kind of limited um, exposure. When we're doing exhibitions, we may have several thousand people come through here. And that is an experience that is on a different level. And the informal learning environment of exhibitions allows faculty to look at their research and figure out how do you best convey the essence of that research and how do we best convey some kind of the impact of that on people's lives. So this exhibition was one that a faculty member came and uh, came to us and said we may be interested in doing this. It would help support his program. It would help support the students uh, in his program. We also worked with a graphic design class to design the graphic identity for this, uh, this exhibition. Student designers uh, did the, the graphic materials related to the exhibition. So When Places Speak is our next exhibition here which is going to be, uh, I think, a really thought-provoking uh, exhibition. We're working with a faculty member who, from the Interior Design Department who has been doing a, a study about how design and designers can help combat sex trafficking. She um, has this beautiful series of photographs that are designed to spark our, our thoughts about how can designers help combat social problems? How can design be a tool for social justice? So we did an exhibition called 125 Years of Sitting. Uh, that was a chair exhibition, basically. And it was called 125 Years because that was all the, that was the range that we had for uh, the collection objects. And we had a fair amount of independent uh, furniture designers come. And it was always fun to watch the furniture designers because we would come into the gallery sometimes and they would be lying on the floor looking at things upside down so that they could figure out how were those things made. We did an exhibition last year called A Right to Establish a Home, which was about the, uh, a house that had just uh, gotten national register uh, status for its role in a community as being um, the home of an African American family that moved into an historically white neighborhood and the conflicts that resulted in that and the, the community connectedness uh, that was developed as a result of um, that action uh, that happened with that. And the exhibition then told the story of the house, told the story of the family, told the story of the community, and then talked about who's there in the community now and what it means to that community. And it goes to show a bit of the range of uh, how we look at design and we look at design in this, in this kind of holistic way. Um, oftentimes it is how can design solve problems, but it, it also gives us the opportunity to enjoy design from an from a, a aesthetic and less heavy perspective, I suppose, as the toys, as the toys show. We employ three graduate students. Uh, we employ a student uh, in collections. Lorraine Gibson is our current collections assistant. Uh, we employ uh, a student to, to do our graphic design. We also employ a student from the retail merchandising track to do our communications. We also employ about eight to 10 undergraduates as our gallery staff. And they, during installation changes, become our installation crew. So they learn practical skills like how to paint a wall. Uh, and then we also work uh, in the spring and the fall with graphic design classes to develop the graphic identities for the next exhibition. So we're intimately involved in what the programs, um, the program goals are of uh, the students' academic experience or the program goals of their, that their instructors have for them uh, as learners. My focus is really on uh, women's clothing from the mid-20th century, and so it is 
been really awesome to be in the collection and get to see those things firsthand. Um, you know, I think during my undergrad, um, say I wanted to study like, Victorian fashion, I looked at pictures, um, but because of the Goldstein and its collection, you can actually see these things firsthand. Um, and it really, it doesn't compare. Um, I think especially because people see a gallery, which is just one room and don't realize that there's so much more beyond it that we have um, this huge collection and all these resources. Um, and so I would love to be able to go somewhere and to work in maintaining that collection and trying to share it with people and making it as accessible as possible. One of the things that we do is work with uh, our design minor classes and our museum studies classes and provide opportunities for students that, are, that have other degrees or are pursuing other degrees but are taking design as a minor to experience a little design in a little more depth. And for somebody that's getting a business degree and a design minor, it adds that sort of depth to their program. For our museum studies students uh, and the museum studies uh, degree, it's a minor that's added to a, an academic degree. Uh, we are one of several museums that the museum studies students experience and learn about uh, museum processes and museum history and how that um, can be applied in their area, whether it's anthropology or German studies or art history or um, graphic design. We have 34,000 objects in the collection. It's a very large collection. We are photographing all of our collection and putting it online because almost all of our collection um, is uh, textiles or um, fragile materials. Very little of it is ever out at one time. And that is Part of our commitment to um, accessibility, we have free exhibitions, most of our programs are free, is to put, all, put this collection online and be able to create uh, online experiences. We even had some museums uh, find them online and ask to borrow them, so we've lent some things. We lent something to the Met because of that. The one thing that I find that is really exciting about being an academic museum is that you're surrounded by people who are researching all sorts of topics and you can make all of these wonderful contexts and con uh, connections that, um, that allow you to uh, present or allow this museum to present uh, a wide range of really deep research from people that, that that's their passion and we can help make their passion uh, evident through exhibitions or programs. So there's a lot of interesting things going on at a, in an academic environment. How exciting it is to be uh, part of an academic museum, but know uh, that there are other academic museums in other, uh, at other colleges and universities that we can learn from one another. It's helpful for us to, uh, to have that, that sort of internal dialogue as well as an opportunity to share with one another so that we can um, collectively uh, serve our, our colleges and universities and our, and our student learners uh, with object-based learning uh, as best we can.